Thank you, everybody. We had a very good meeting. We talked about North Korea, as you can imagine. Uh, we're very much in agreement. I think we're very unified, and we have been right from the beginning. This is something that has to stop. We all feel that very strongly. I will be speaking to President Xi tonight uh, from China, and uh, we've been working very closely with China and with other countries. Uh, that phone call will take place tonight. So if you have any questions, go ahead. Mr. President, what have you been able to do to, to reassure South Korea, given the recent tensions? Well, I think as far as reassurance, they probably feel as reassured as they can feel. Certainly, they feel more reassured with me than they do with other presidents from the past, because uh, nobody's really done the job that they're supposed to be doing. And that's why we're at this horrible situation right now. And it is a very bad situation. It's a very dangerous situation. And it will not continue, that I can tell you. So I think South Korea is very happy. And you don't mention Japan, but I think Japan is very happy with the job we're doing. I think they're very uh, impressed with the job we're doing. And uh, let's see how it turns out. Mr. President, were you being sarcastic when you thanked Vladimir Putin for expelling 755 diplomats from Russia? In order to reduce our payroll? Absolutely. I so think you know that. I think you know that. We'll see. Uh, in fact, uh, I was just speaking to I was just speaking to the Secretary, and we're talking about coming up with an answer. When, Rex? Tell me. By September 1st. By September 1st, we'll have a response. But we have reduced payroll very substantially. Yes. Mr. President, a lot of Americans are on edge with this, with the rhetoric going back and forth between the United States and North Korea. What can you tell them? What, what you can tell them? You know what I can say? Hopefully, it'll all work out. Okay? Nobody loves a peaceful solution better than President Trump, that I can tell you. Hopefully, it'll all work out. But this has been going on for many years. Would have been a lot easier to solve this years ago before they were in the position that they're in. But we will see what happens. We think that lots of good things could happen, and we could also have a bad solution. But we think lots of good things can happen. What would be a bad solution, sir? I think you know the answer to that. I think you know the answer to that. Is Iran abiding by the nuclear agreement, in your view? Well, we have uh, some pretty strong opinions. Uh, but I would say that they are certainly not uh, abiding by the spirit of the agreement. And I'd go for, you know, really a further step. But I would say that the spirit of the agreement Iran is not abiding by, absolutely. Staying in that region, do you have the right generals in place right now to fight in Afghanistan? Well, we're going to make a determination, Peter, in a very short period of time as to Afghanistan. I've been looking at it. It's our longest war in history, 17 years. That's unacceptable. We will be making decisions, as you know very well. We're looking at that very closely. Uh, we talked about it a little bit today. We talked about Venezuela today also, by the way. Uh, Venezuela is uh, a mess. It's a very dangerous mess and a very sad situation. But we talked about Venezuela also. We're a couple, we're a couple weeks into General John Kelly's time as your chief of staff. What? Have you done differently? What has he done to change the way you act, perhaps, in the way that your White House acts? Well, I think General Kelly has done a fantastic job. He's a respected person, respected by everybody. Uh, things have come together very nicely. And I have to say, I think probably, and I've gone through this a lot, but I think very, very few presidents have done what we've done in a six-month period, whether it's optimism in business, whether it's a stock market, whether it's picking up $4 trillion in value with companies and equity, whether it's uh, all of the many things, including a Supreme Court justice, uh, regulations being cut massively. We have, I think it's 48 bills being passed in the legislature. I'm talking about legislature, not just executive orders. I think few have done anywhere near what we've done. And we'll work now on tax reform cuts. We'll never, we'll never stop working on, as you know, health care. That's also working. And we're working on other things, uh, including infrastructure. We're going to have a very big infrastructure bill. So I think nobody's done, very rarely could I say that anybody's done. I'm not sure that anybody's done what we've done in a six-month period. Uh, but I think that General Kelly has brought a, a tremendous uh, — he's brought something very special to the office of chief. I call him chief. Uh, he's a respected man. He's a four-star from the Marines. And he carries himself like a four-star for the Marines. And he's my friend, which is very important. Mr. President, a number of Republican senators have uh, rushed to defense Senator McGurley and McConnell in the last day or so. 
Uh, what do you make of that? Have you reached out I don't make anything of it. We should have had health care approved. Uh, he should have known that he had a couple of votes that turned on him, and that should have been very easy to handle whether it's through the fact that you take away a committee chairmanship or do whatever you have to do. But what happened, in my opinion, last week is unacceptable. Uh, people have been talking about repeal and replace for seven years, long before I ever decided to be doing what I'm doing. Seven years they've been talking repeal and replace, and it didn't happen. And not only didn't happen, it was a surprise. And it was a horrible surprise. And it was very unfair to the Republican Party and very unfair to the people of this country. So I was not uh, — I was not impressed. Now, can he do good? I think so. I think we can do very well on taxes, cuts, reform. I think we're going to do well on infrastructure. And things will happen uh, with respect to health care. And I think things will happen maybe outside of necessarily needing Congress, because there are things that I can do as President that will have a huge impact on health care, so you watch. Have you Stay tuned. To the have you spoken to the governor of Guam, and what did you tell him? No, I have not, but I feel that they will be very safe. Believe me, they will be very safe. And if anything happens to Guam, there's going to be big, big trouble in North Korea. Have you ordered any change in our military readiness? I don't want it to say I, that. I just don't, I don't talk about that. You know that. I'm Mr. not President, one. I'm not one that says we're attacking Mosul in four months. Mr. Okay, Mr. we do it or we don't do it. Yes. You're, you're interrupting your trip here to return to Washington on Monday. Can you tell us why you're doing that? Well, this isn't really, for me, a trip. You know, I stay out of Manhattan because it's so disruptive to go to Manhattan. Now, I will be going on Sunday night. I have meetings on Monday and Tuesday going to Manhattan. But I stay out because it's so disruptive. You know, all of my life — I mean, my adult life, because I grew up in Queens, not in Manhattan. But during the time that I lived in Manhattan, whenever a president came in, it was very disruptive. And I think I'm probably more disruptive than any of them. So when they have to close Fifth Avenue, when they have to close 56th Street and many other streets — so I'm here for that reason. We're doing a tremendous amount of work. We're having, you know, large numbers of meetings, and I'm on the phone a lot. But I'm here for that reason. I just don't — I would love to go to my home in Trump Tower, but it's very, very disruptive to do. So when's the trip to Washington on Monday? Yes, we have a conference scheduled. We have a very important meeting scheduled. And we're going to have a pretty big press conference on Monday. Secretary Tillerson has spoken emphasizing diplomacy. You've spoken increasingly emphasizing the potential for military options. Are you two on the same page? Totally. Uh, I can tell you totally on the same page. And, Secretary, maybe you'd like to make a statement? Well, I think it, you know, it takes a combined uh, message there if we're going to get effective movement out of the regime in North Korea. I think the President's made it clear he, he prefers a diplomatic solution. I think he responded to that, in effect, just a moment ago. And so I think what the President's doing is trying to support our efforts by ensuring North Korea understands what the stakes are. Speaking of, speaking of the State Department right now, these recent acoustic attacks we've learned about regarding diplomats, American diplomats in Cuba. Who's responsible for the acoustic attacks? Is it Cuba? Is it Russia? Who's to blame for that? We've not been able to determine who is to blame. We do hold the Cuban authorities responsible for the safety and security of all of our people, just as every host country has a responsibility for safety and security of diplomats in their country. So we hold the Cuban authorities responsible for finding out who is uh, carrying out these health attacks on not just our uh, diplomats, but as you've seen now, there are other cases with other diplomats as well. What do you make of this awful situation of them losing their hearing these American it's awful. You just described it exactly correctly, which is why we're bringing people out. We have many options for Venezuela. And by the way, I'm not going to rule out a military option. We have many options for Venezuela. This is our neighbor. This is, you know, we're all over the world, and we have troops all over the world in places that are very, very far away. Venezuela is not very far away, and the people are suffering and they're dying. We have many options for Venezuela, including a possible military option, if necessary. That would be a U.S.-led Say? That would be a U.S.-led military operation? We don't talk about it, but a military operation, a military option, is certainly something that we could pursue. We heard, we heard from North Korean state TV saying, we consider the U.S. no more than a lump which we can beat to a jelly any time. Well, let me hear uh, let me hear others say it, because when you say that, I don't know what you're referring to and who's making the statement. But let me hear 
Kim Jong-un say it, okay? He's not saying it. He hasn't been saying much for the last three days. You let me hear him say it. Mr. President, do you support regime change in North Korea or in Venezuela? Do you think those regimes uh, I, I don't want to comment because I think they're very different places, so I don't want to comment. Uh, but uh, I support uh, peace, I support safety, and I support having to get very tough, if we have to, to protect the American people and also to protect our allies. Do you think your vice president will be a candidate for president in 2020? Uh, I don't think so. No, not — no, I don't think so at all. He's a good guy. He's just, as you know, he's left for Colombia and various other places. Uh, he's been terrific. He's been a great ally of mine he's and a great friend of mine. Are you considering further economic sanctions against North Korea? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Very strong ones. And which one? They're already very strong. Uh, we are considering additional sanctions at a very, very high level, and probably, you could say, as strong as they get. Okay? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you.